Is it a forgotten entity in secret encryption? First of all, I'd like to thank my dear colleague, uh, Professor Magda Shafalbias, for inviting me to give this talk. I don't know if it's forgetting or not, but I'll try to it. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I congratulate him ahead for the uh, success of the conference. And it's a real pleasure to be among my colleagues and professors here. I know it's uh, just a big challenge actually just for uh, this kind of talk uh, at the end of uh, at the end of the, of the day. Allah is somehow can make the other one hot for the other one. I'm just kidding. Bye, Mr. Okay. Uh, heart failure is it a forgetting entity in chronic kidney disease patients? Yeah, I'm just going to highlight just a few points related to the heart failure among chronic kidney disease. In actual fact, in actual fact in, uh, when we talk about heart failure, we just come to mind the cardiorenal syndrome. So this is not the fact actually that I'm going to talk about. And I'm just going to talk briefly about the background of heart failure in chronic kidney disease patients. And there is a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, subsets of uh, heart failure in chronic kidney disease patients is either with uh, preserved uh, ejection fraction or it's with reduced ejection fraction or even mid-range ejection fraction. So for the sake of the uh, uh, lecture, it's just being classified into these five categories, heart failure with preserved ejection systolic ejection uh, fraction, and then dialysis and heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, and then dialysis chronic kidney disease patient, heart failure with preserved and dialysis dependent patient, and heart failure with reduced ejection fraction among dialysis patient, and finally heart failure in kidney transplant patient. Uh, there is no actual, there is no definite, uh, I mean, definition for, for heart failure among chronic kidney disease patients, but uh, the uh, 2016 uh, European Society guidelines uh, define uh, the heart failure on the basis of signs and symptoms, uh, structural and or functional uh, uh, cardiac abnormalities resulting in reduced cardiac output and or elevated intracardiac pressure at risk or during stress. Regarding the pathophysiology of uh, uh, heart failure among chronic kidney disease patients, uh, in actual fact, there is de novo heart failure in patients with chronic kidney disease in about 20% of patients. And the emergence of heart failure uh, varies depending on the degree of chronic kidney disease and the modality of uh, uh, renal replacement therapy, including uh, transplantation. And this uh, graph actually shows that it's a heart failure or probability of the heart coming the probability of heart failure is related to the, card, the, the clinical status. It's either just chronic kidney disease without dialysis or in patient on dialysis, peritoneal dialysis, or uh, transplant. And you can see here the list among them is transplant patient that have come with the prevalence of uh, heart failure. And it's related to the decline in the GFR and also related to the decrease, increase in the albuminuria in patients. It is just, as we all know, that the proteinuria or albuminuria is a surrogate marker for the cardiovascular disease and morbidity and the mortality. And again, it's heart failure and chronic kidney disease are running by directional measures. That's why you can't find renal cardiac or cardiovascular syndrome. So, and this is uh, data from this clinical, from uh, this meta-analysis showed that the uh, conclusion of this large meta-analysis that uh, a heart failure is either preserved or reduced ejection fracture are associated with uh, decline in the GFR and as the chronic kidney disease decline from stage 3A and down. And 
uh, again, this data from USRD uh, chapter 9, uh, talking about the cardiovascular disease in patient with end stage renal disease. There is an estimate number, sorry, there is an estimate. An estimated 44% of patients on hemodialysis are suffering heart failure. As, as you can see, it's just divided according to the as, as a reserve of the reduced uh, uh, ejection fraction. And this is just a ski, uh, graph showing the, uh, very briefly the uh, pathophysiology of chronic uh, of heart failure with chronic kidney disease. As we will know, in just in heart failure in general population, it's related to either pressure overload, volume overload, or other cardiomatic changes together with the other additional risk like traditional risk factor or other concurrent condition like coronary artery disease, myocardial infarction, or other infiltrative process. Together with the decline of the GFR, we can find symptomatic heart failure, either ejection fraction, reduced or preserved, and the net result is the progression of the chronic kidney disease, heart failure, hospitalization, and arrhythmias, deaths, and lung failure. As a diagnosis of uh, heart failure among chronic kidney disease, it's just a bit uh, difficult, actually, because you can't find the, this criteria as a preserved or a reduced ejection fraction. So it is like general population actually will go for, but the scenario may be different a little bit. As you can see that, that there is no accepted definition or criteria for diagnosis of heart failure among chronic kidney disease, because simply you can't find the volume overload unrelated to the volume, I mean to the heart uh, failure itself. It may be simply related to the volume dependent in chronic kidney disease, especially uh, dialysis vision. And the diagnosis of uh, heart failure on different scenarios, like heart failure with preserved uh, uh, non-dialysis chronic kidney disease, echocardiography, other bio biomarkers like uh, uh, natritic peptide, P or pronatritic peptide, or, uh, 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 or cardiopulmonary stress testing. And uh, in patient with uh, reduced ejection fraction, the standard uh, of care just regarding the, like other diseases, like other, uh, I mean, uh, investigation in any chronic kidney disease patient, we do serum, serum sodium, potassium, GFR, album to creatinine ratio, PMB and uh, uh, pro PMB, pulmonary artery pressure also, and monitoring of biomarkers and evidence technique. Uh, and, and the changes in the volume status also can be detected by just a clinical examination or chest radiograph or lung ultrasound. And there are additional uh, uh, evaluation uh, or consideration for patients with preserved uh, ejection fraction and reduced ejection fraction in patients uh, who are on dialysis. This test includes chest X-ray, for example, echocardiogram and echocardiography and other modalities. And for example, chest X-ray is a little bit sensitive uh, uh, in, in detecting uh, volume overload. And however, it's going to be, the, I mean, the, maybe the, one of the very important screening measures uh, for uh, evaluation of heart failure among chronic kidney disease patients. And uh, echocardiography is the gold standard actually for diagnosis. And you can assess the left ejection fraction, left ventricular ejection fraction or hypertrophy, or right ejection fraction and chamber dimension. And approximately almost 87 of patients on the on, uh, with chronic kidney disease have some sort of uh, valvular or some sort of left ventricular hypertrophy before initiating uh, dialysis. And the ECG, it's very important actually for uh, risk uh, detection and uh, evaluation of uh, ischemia or, for example, pericardial disease. And other cardiac, other modalities, including cardiac uh, managing, uh, uh, cardiac magnetic resonance, uh, global longitudinal whole body by impedance, extended cardiac resin, and emerging diagnostic uh, tools include pulmonary artery and bloodly monitoring or uh, thoracic impedance uh, monitoring. And now I'm going to jump very quickly through the treatment of heart failure among chronic kidney disease patients. It's just maybe um, 
like to prevent the incident of heart failure and to treat the existing heart failure and again treatment of uh, chronic kidney disease related condition and dialysis, for example, iron deficiency and other measures. Uh, just very briefly, we'll just go through the very important issues in patients with chronic kidney disease and their relation to heart failure, hypertensive control, and glycemic control. And uh, in terms of uh, blood pressure, Dr. Iman just mentioned right now about the tight blood pressure control in a sprint trial. And the data actually have shown that from the sprint trial, there is an improvement of the ejection fraction in patients with the chronic kidney disease, suffering hypertension, and the incidence was much less if the patient got tight control with less than 20 over 70 or 75. And uh, the data from uh, Renal uh, have shown very clearly that the risk reduction of almost 32% was observed for the first hospitalization for heart failure and uh, in the use of 10 patient versus placebo group. Uh, blood, blood sugar or diabetic control in patients with chronic kidney disease just we have learned it from the ATPD trial and from valid and many trials that uh, child control of uh, blood sugar is related to the reduction of all cause mortality and many different trials have talked about that and in actual fact the recent drugs that have been introduced to the market including for example SG2 inhibitors have shown that not only to show progression of the chronic kidney disease, but also reduce the risk of heart failure and other cardiac and uh, cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. And one of these trials is the Imbaric trial, which is just released in uh, 2017, and have shown very clearly that the Imbaric uh, trial, the Imbagliflozine, uh, uh, resulted in 39% reduction in the uh, hospitalization of for heart failure in type 2 diabetic patient and similarly can fast trials with scan closing also show the same result and finally the declared study have shown in data uh, shown that also the same result almost and the heart failure reduction was much uh, observed in this uh, 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 group of patients and this study it just recently just I think a few uh, months ago and uh, just I'm going to talk uh, about the uh, treatment of heart failure or existing heart failure. In actual fact, we have some uh, barriers for treatment of heart failure in patients with chronic kidney disease because all know the treatment of heart failure is, is, is not going to be changed because of the chronic kidney disease or so. So angiotensin receptor uh, blocker or ACE inhibitors or beta blockade or uh, mineral corticoid or other even the uh, nebulizing or are, uh, all are associated with some uh, morbidities including uh, hyperkalemia or decline in the GFR. So we have to be very careful for managing of such patient. If we are talking about the beta blocker, one of these uh, large trials, which is a merit, uh, trial of uh, metoprolol have shown that there is a reduction in the uh, risk for risk mortality risk for uh, heart failure and uh, uh, mortality among patients receiving metoprolol uh, and uh, a similar results were observed with metoprolol although it's just an old study but almost the same result and have shown that sustained the benefit of bisoprolol uh, with worsening kidney function. Again, another cardiodilol also incre uh, just increases the two year survival in patients on dialysis with cardiomyopathy. And uh, uh, there, there is a problem actually for the choice of the beta blocker among the patients with chronic kidney disease, which is the uh, renal excretion and the dialysability of the drug. Just Dr. Iman also was talking, uh, was talking about the dialysability of the drug, and this article which was published in Jason have shown that the dialysability of certain beta blocker. For example, metoprolol actually it increases the mortality from heart failure in one uh, one point four fold increase in the mortality among the patients receiving the uh, uh, dialysable uh, drugs 
including the metoprolol. Uh, just I'm going to just jump very quickly about the angiotensin blockade. Either uh, its inhibitors, ARBs, and uh, mineral corticoid can lead to decreased GFR, as we all know, and this is a mini challenge. Actually, we have a patient with, uh, uh, when we treat patient with uh, heart failure with this medication. Um, and we can consider ARB if the patient is intolerant to ACE inhibitors, for example, dry cough and angioedema and the other uh, uh, intolerable uh, facts for ACE. And this uh, study actually, which was published very earlier to 1993 in Captopril, uh, which is a safe study of survival and ventricular enlargement. Uh, and this study uh, showed that the uh, captopril was superior to the placebo in maintaining the cardiac function in chronic kidney disease patients. And similar other reports have shown that the similar finding uh, uh, in terms of uh, the superiority over the placebo in management of heart failure in chronic kidney disease patients. And this is uh, one of the newer agents, which is the nebrilicin or uh, sacobutril. It's kind of combination between uh, part and this liberalizing. And this data was published very recently in heart failure and showed that the patient with heart failure was preserved uh, uh, ejection fraction therapy. Uh, the treatment with liberalizing was associated with better preservation of the ejection fraction, uh, uh, stability GFR compared with part However, these patients suffer some sort of uh, proteinuria when compared to Valsartan. The diuretic is actually one of the mainstay in the treatment of the heart failure, and the, uh, the, the, the Cezai diuretics are the mainstay of blood pressure control in general population. How about in patients with chronic kidney disease? We know that there is some limitations. To, to, to use for this kind of medications in patients with chronic kidney disease, unless the GFR is more than 30. However, the newer loop diuretics, the uh, other loop diuretics are the, uh, uh, the choice of treatment in such a patient. And this is one of the studies which is the dose trial or diuretic optimization strategies uh, evaluation. And this study has shown that high dose of uh, loop diuretics are associated with improved DCA scores with gain and the net fluid at 72 hours. However, this is associated with rising serum creatinine. Other trials showed that the superiority of terizomide versus uh, 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 furizomide in patients with heart failure. And uh, again, we're just talking about very important issue in management of heart failure which is the mineral corticoid antagonist and in patients with heart failure. We know that we use it very cautiously because of the issue of hyperkalemia and decline in the GFR. And there are many trials actually uh, for mineral corticoid antagonist uh, excluded patients with more advanced chronic kidney disease because of the safety issue. I mean hyperkalemia. And this is one of the medications which is the uh, spironolactone is very important and very famous drug. And this is one of the studies which is a real trial randomized and the tool evaluation study have shown that the treatment with spironolactone is associated with reduction in all cause mortality of hospitalization of heart failure. If the patient with GFR more or less than 60 milliliter per minute. And this is other uh, newer epilirinol. Uh, this also shows similar results when compared to uh, uh, spironolactone. And also all, all, almost the same actually to the spironolactone. And there is uh, uh, some concern about use of mineral corticoid in patients with advanced chronic uh, kidney disease with heart failure. Especially patients suffering G4, G5, or patients on dialysis are associated with severe hyperkalemia. And this is one of these studies which have shown that the effect of spironolactone on the risk, and the risk that actually uh, this among the patient on dialysis or advanced chronic kidney disease, this observational study identified significantly increased risk of hospitalization of heart failure. Okay, so this is a very negative study. 
Although uh, the, the previous data, there is ongoing trial actually, I just got it from the clinical trial, and this is an aldosterone antagonist chronic hemodialysis intervention survival patient, which is ultimate. And just the result will be available maybe one or two years because this is just a very long trial. And this is very new uh, uh, mineral corticoid antagonist, which is uh, fenerinone, non steroidal mineral corticoid antagonist, and it was showing that uh, decrease in the secondary composite uh, endpoint uh, when, when, uh, and in terms of cardiovascular hospitalization, uh, emergency department for uh, visit and worsening hyperkalemia or cardiac uh, functions. And this is the main issue that we just, we just be careful in treatment of patients with heart failure and suffering chronic kidney disease. So the treatment is very challenging as to go with the classic treatment that we have. Uh, however, there are two newer agents actually. And there are two newer agents, which is the Batirumir or the, the Virtasa, which is available outside, actually, in Europe, which we see it just in, in every editor. And the other one is sodium, zirconium, or leukemia. This is uh, two, two uh, uh, important drugs, and they are not uh, yani, uh, associated with the uh, bad effects that other res resins that we uh, have in practice. Um, there is another uh, method of treatment, Dr. Uh, so, Dr. Sop was talking about the devices in patients with heart failure. Similarly, we can just have it in patients suffering heart failure, which is mechanical circulatory support, which is associated with improvement of the cardiac performance and associated also with improvement of the kidney. As adjunctive treatment, including improved management of patients with sleep apnea, obesity, and other. It's okay. And other uh, modalities of treatment include, include the uh, traditional measures that uh, management of anemia among the chronic kidney disease patients suffering the heart failure by iron injection or ESA or iron hypoxia and usable factors, min uh, mineral and bone disorders. Uh, macro and the micronutrient and mood of dialysis actually the frequency of dialysis is associated with improvement of uh, uh, is associated with improvement of the cardiac performance and the uh, best among them is the home nocturnal hemodialysis and it's almost the next beyond the transplant and normal uh, kidney function and a patient with transplant, in actual fact, the treatment of a patient with transplant is the same actually like those suffering of chronic kidney disease, suffering uh, heart failure. And I'm not just going.